All right, that was a tangent. Um, let's get back to the podcast here. Um, all right, there was actually some great questions here. This is why I actually saved these. Um, this is a great. If you guys want to have a, uh, if you want to have a blueprint for a great question, I, and I'm actually, you know, I got to tell you, you guys have really stepped up in general. I'm going to give you all a pat on the back. You guys are really, you're writing really funny shit, and they're, they're great questions. Like this one here. Listen to this question. Bill, if you were a serial killer, how would you kill your victims, and what would be your serial killer name? Uh, for my job, I have a lot of time to think about stuff, and I was listening to your story about the Green River Killer, and it got me to thinking, if I was a serial killer, how would I do it? He's alluding to my podcast a couple weeks ago where I was talking about how they always give like serial killers nicknames like they're playing in the fucking Rose Bowl, you know? Uh, so anyway, so, <laughs> so he's... Actually, actually, you know what? That's what I did last week. That's what the fuck I did. I looked up a bunch of serial killer nicknames. You know, I noticed a lot of guys had uh, great nicknames, but there was actually a surprising amount of female serial killers, but not enough of them got cool nicknames, except for this one lady who was known as the Giggling Grandmother. And uh, I can't remember. It was a couple weeks ago, but she literally killed like four husbands both her sisters, a second cousin or whatever, and they finally, you know, figured out what the fuck was going on. The amount of shit you could get away with back in the day. You know, nowadays you got to kill like 22 complete strangers. Back in the day before they knew how to dust for fingerprints and they didn't have all this fucking DNA investigation, you could literally kill everybody at work, you know. You work with 40 people and 40 weekends in a row, somebody could be disappearing and you could literally just keep shrugging your shoulders going, I don't know either. I mean, yeah, what are the odds? Um, so, anyways, when they finally picked up this old lady and they interrogated her, I guess she would just laugh when they would, did you kill him? And she would just sort of laugh and say, yeah, I did. And they couldn't tell if she was just trying to mask her embarrassment or if she was just that shut down or whatever. But she got the nickname, the Giggling Grandmother. That's a great one. That's a great one. The giggling grandma, alliteration, grandmother, she's supposed to be making cookies and she's out killing people. Gives you a chill. It's fucking beautiful. So anyways, let's get back to this. So this guy says he he sat around thinking about it at work. And uh, okay, here's his deal. He said, not to sound too crazy, but I did uh, did give it some thought as how I would kill somebody. He said, I figured I would use a stick I found in the forest and sharpen it, use it, and then burn the evidence. I would be the caveman killer. And, dude, I got to tell you, that's just fucking great. That's just really well thought out. How fucking awesome is that? All these guys for years in the mob, you know, they tape up the gun with duct tape, then they shoot the dude, and then they throw it in the fucking river, and then some fucking nerd who never gets any pussy who's got time to use a metal detector at the bottom of the river finds the fucking thing, and next thing you know, you get busted at your 30-year fucking high school graduation, right? Happens all the time. This is perfect. This is perfect. If you kill somebody, you don't even know with the sharpened stick. You burn the fucking stick. This is so good, I don't even want to fucking, I don't even want to like, like, like talk about it. I'm afraid I'm giving somebody a great idea. So let's get to me. How would I do it? And what would my serial killer name would be? Um, well, if you know me, I'm, I'm a big fan of yesteryear. I'm not looking forward to the future. So I would go old school. You know, I would go old school. I, I'd try to bring back the sickle. You know, I would use a sickle. And, uh, and I would definitely get into the placement of the body, okay? It would just be me because I, I learned from a cop that the more people you involve in a crime, the higher chance you have of getting caught because somebody is going to be that fucking moron like that kid. Remember that fucking kid in, uh, what was it, Saturday Night Fever when he doesn't jump in on the fight? Where were you guys? I, I, I was looking for you. There's always one of those guys, you know? And, it, you know, they, they just start crying. Oh, sorry, we'll be dead in. I was with this guy, Bill. Oh, he's fucking working the fucking improv next weekend. Um, so I would definitely do it alone, and I, I would bring back the sickle. I would wear the hood, and I would do all that type. And I wouldn't wear the hood. It would just make me all sweaty. I'm going to kill him. Who cares if they see my face? And basically what I would do is I would just fucking chop their heads off, and I would leave the head in their bed, and I'd leave their body in the bathtub, and I would be known as the uh, bed, bath, and beheader. 
<laughs> can I can I just apologize for that? I really knew that that was going to stink as I <laughs> as I was starting to say it. I knew that that was going to be awful, but I don't know. I was just I was trying to fucking I hate corporations, and if there was just a way that you could go around killing people and to have it kind of sound like Best Buy or Bed Bath & Beyond, just so some fucking douchebag would have to actually stand behind a podium and actually read some letter of detraction going, we don't condone, we here at Bed Bath & Beyond do not condone what the Bed Bath & Beheader does. Um, we don't condone um, even just assaulting people. Once again, we are Bed Bath & Beyond. We, there's no beheading that happens here. And um, I know he's still on the loose, but I think it's safe to say that he does not work for us. And uh, we are cooperating with the uh, local authorities, have answered all their questions, and that's all we have to say on the matter. And we would just like to get back to selling pillowcases. You know, just to make them fucking do that.